Things are heating up here. Time to report back to Alron and let him know the good news. <laughs> I bet his jaw drop in surprise when he hears. Hmm. I finally tracked you down, Particio. Oh, what's this now? Fog? Weather's all wrong for a fog bank to roll on through. Whoa there. Alron's manner's gone white as a ghost. What in tarnation's going on? Ah, it's even misty inside. Uh, this fog, it ain't right. Dang, fog's everywhere. Master Farticio. You all right? Stay with me, fella. A um, man. He appeared out of the mist with a strange device. He... He attacked me. That's rotten. Where'd he go? To... Master Alron's room. I failed him. I should have stopped the intruder. Porticio, please. Leave it to me. I'll deal with that suspicious sneak. Hold on, Alrond. I'm coming. Uh, Alrond! Porticio, stay back. There's something hiding in this fog. Uh, there, there is? It's too dangerous. Leave me. Run! Sorry, Alron. I can't do that. I never turn my back when there's an enemy lurking about. Still, it's hot as high noon here. Oh, this mist. I could swear I've seen its lack before. I, I got it. This ain't mist nor fog. It's steam. But why is there steam in here? <clears throat> oh, ho, ho. some varmint sneaking around using the steam to hide, eh? I don't know who or what you are, but didn't your parents teach you any manners? I don't care if you're some sort of fog monster or what. I'm ready to fight. Come on! I... I've been foiled. You don't feel a lick of remorse for what you've done, do you? Listen, the reason Mr. Rock gave you the boot was because you were playing dirty. No. No. But I'm a forgiving sort. So, let me give you a chance to set matters right. You're hired, fella, if you want the job. Excuse me? Of Course, I gotta kick that offer down the line a bit. I don't have the funds to pay you yet. But, once I buy the rights to the steam engine from Mr. Rock, you've got a place working for me. What a joke. You don't really believe you can produce 80 billion, do you? Who knows for sure. Still, I believe I can do it. In the end, a person can't achieve nothing unless they got faith in themselves. <sighs> You're a man of unnatural tenacity. That's a talent. You'd make a good worker for sure. Just you wait a little while, Thurston. 
I promise the day will come when I can give you a job. I... I admit defeat. You have a risk-friendly approach to life, don't you? I don't doubt you'd hire anyone off the street, no matter their credentials or background. Everyone's got a job they're suited for. Only problem's figuring out what that is. Oh, by the by, I came to let you know how the store's doing. Oh? I've been eagerly awaiting news. How's business? <laughs> Try to keep your socks on, but... Huh. Feast your eyes on this! A genuine clock bank pocket watch. As part of our opening sale, we're offering two for the price of one. Act now, they're going fast. I'll take one. Oh, me too, me too. Uh, this deal's gonna bankrupt me, but what the hey? Go on and take it, you thieves. Oh, my. This energy, this verve. Wellgrove has returned to the hustle and bustle of better days. What magic did you work to achieve this particio? <laughs> simple. First magic spell was a simple policy. Sell high quality goods on the cheap. By centralizing the destination for our suppliers, uh, that's this place. We simplify logistics and enable transportation en masse. That lowers the cost of said transport, meaning we can sell better goods for cheaper. Spell number two, this department store itself. The convenience of having all these goods in one place means people stop by loads of stores and buy more, more, more. In short, we built the place so lots of folks can and want to shop here. That's bound to make it livelier than a rodeo. These two simple ideas are what's generating all that energy. <laughs> that and a dash of passion. I wish my father could have been here to see this. Thank you, Particio. This more than proves your worth. As promised, here is my end of the bargain. Eighty billion leaves. Uh, wh what's this little thing? A check. A promissory note that you can exchange for legal tender. I figured it would be rather hard to carry around eighty billion in coin. Oh, good point, uh, I guess. Hmm? If you are dissatisfied, I can throw some silk into the bargain. Uh, no, no, I, I trust you at your word, Alron. Oh, right. We should draw up a contract for this loan. I promise that I'll pay you back. <laughs> Not necessary. You've already given me a down payment. But that's just my calling card. A single silver leaf. Indubitably. This is a symbol, a promise that no mere paper can equal. <sighs> Hauron. Alrighty then. Time to swing on over to Mr. Rock's place and buy up that steam engine. If I may ask, do you really intend to sign a deal with Rock? I do not expect a businessman of his caliber to simply hand over the steam engine willingly. Huh. A word of warning. Do not trust that man, Particio. You would do well to ponder how he will react to your proposal 
and plan accordingly. Uh, thanks for the warning, Alron. Much appreciated. P Particio, hello there. Yeah, Ori. Oh, seriously, where do you keep coming from? Not important. Have I got a scoop for you? Magnate Rock has released a proclamation. A big announcement is coming regarding the steam engine. Massive, earth-shaking. Uh, suspicious timing. I wonder what he's up to. Uh, hope he didn't get tired of waiting for me and made some wild play while I was out beating the bushes. Uh, might as well head on over and see what all the fuss is about. Wait a sec. Does that mean you've collected the dough? <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> Big scoops are falling from the sky today. Wait until my brother hears about this. I believed in you from the start, Particio. Uh, hey, don't leave. I wasn't finished yet. The proclamation will be made on Rock's very own private island. Rock Island! It's private property, so there are no ferries. You'll need a ship to get there. Darn. I see. I wouldn't mind lending you my ship. I appreciate the offer, but I'll have to decline. Besides, I don't deserve to see Mr. Rock unless I can get to him on my own. <laughs> That's a very you sort of sentiment. Righty then. I'll just have to go procure myself a ship. Make it a split. So this is where the arms trade is to take place. The clouds move swiftly overhead. Just as they did on that day. Looks like more war on the horizon. Life of a soldier, huh? The coin's good, but will I be able to spend it before I'm in the dirt? <sighs> we just have to endure. How much world can there be to conquer? Oh, noble protectors of the castle, would you care to buy any oil? My son is soon to serve within the keep. I mean to celebrate his appointment with a gift. Stay away from us, low-born scum. I can smell your stench from here. Oh, I... I apologize, sir. Forgive me. Was that really necessary? What does it matter? He would thank me for ending his pitiful existence. If he could. <laughs> Do you shed a tear when squashing an insect? Who will soon grow beyond the need of such rabble? Why... Why did this happen? Why did Father have to die? 
This is life in Ku. The king cares only about growing his borders, no matter how many lowborn he crushes underfoot. They killed father for no reason, like he was no better than a fly buzzing around their ears. Huh? You're... You're Prince Hikari. Come here to pray for the lowborn? A rare sight. I'll find the men responsible for this, and they will pay. That won't bring my father back. Won't stop this from happening again. So long as we are lowborn, a boot on our neck is the best we can hope for. Isn't that right, my prince? You can call me Hikari. And you are? Ritsumi Shuyo. Remember it well. I don't plan on groveling in the mud forever. Ritsu. I look forward to hearing the name again. Don't cry, Mika. See those clouds, Hikari? I'm going to etch my name upon them, bold enough for father to see. Just you wait. First things first, I need more information about this shipment. I should start by finding that merchant Kazan told me about. Azuma, was it? Thank you, thank you. Any small business you can afford me is much appreciated. I sense greatness stirring within you. I suppose Kazan wouldn't have thrown his lot in with you otherwise. What is it he always says? An eagle can take the measure of man and need alike from afar. Now, as for the matter of this transaction. A little bird told me it will take place deep within the forest, out of sight from prying eyes. Even so, these weapons are vital to Ku's plans and will likely be heavily guarded. This mission shall determine the course of our nation. It is a great honor to be assigned guard duty Captain Ritsu Mishuyo. An honor I am all too proud to accept, General. I know of your humble origins. You've done well to reach your station. See these weapons delivered safely, and His Majesty will surely lift you even higher. Yes, General. I'll protect the shipment with my life. I am General Ro of Ku. I come here in His Majesty's stead. I don't care a whit for titles or names. Show me the coin. It's been a pleasure. Almost disappointingly uneventful. Well then, load up the wagons. <sighs> Prince Hikari? Those weapons stay where they are. But I won't shed blood if I can avoid it. I must set an example for the future of my home. Leave this place now, and you'll keep your lives. Hikari. They say you're a traitor. 
His Majesty has put a pretty price on your head. If you do not stand down, you will face my blade. <sighs> Curses! Enough. You're no match for me. <sighs> Hikari. Ritsu. I see you yet live, my prince. Leave the weapons here and go. <sighs> You've come all this way just to snatch glory from my hands again? Fine. I'll repay the debt I owe you. There will be no quarter this time, Ritsu. No one will keep me from guiding Ku to the future I envision. A future without bloodshed. Ha! A grand idea. Why do you need that sword, then? Seems to me that's an instrument of death, not peace. Or am I wrong, Hikari? Who is the product of an endless cycle of war? It was built upon a mountain of sacrifices. So long as Mugen is king, nothing will change. But this sword will sever that vicious cycle. <laughs> it seems you've chosen your path, my prince. But you chose wrong. You should have followed Lord Mugen. General Roe, you had my father's ear, his trust. Sheathe your sword, please. I don't want to fight you. My allegiance is to the kingdom, whosoever may wear the crown. And we are here by direct order of his majesty. We cannot simply abandon our duty. If you mean to take these weapons from us, then it will have to be by force. But be prepared to find out why they call me the Wild Bull of Ku. Better men than you have crumpled before my charge. I never wanted to cross swords with you, who served my father so faithfully. But if you insist on forcing me to bear steel... Now, Hikari, finish it! Paint the woods red! <laughs> How much longer will you deny your true nature? How much longer must I tolerate this farce? I see a shadow looms at your back, Lord Hikari. <sighs> Enjoy the time you have. For one day, it will consume you. General Ro! <laughs> Fall back, Captain Ritsu. What? But... Hikari... You will never be king. I'll see to it personally. I'll be waiting for your homecoming. Ritsu... What happened to me? Have I lost control? This cannot stand. 
I won't be forced to hurt my friends again. General Rowe, why didn't you let me take his head then and there? Have you heard nothing of the accursed blood of Clan Ku? I've seen it before, in battle. Something possesses them. It has delivered many a warrior of Clan Ku from the brink of death to the crest of victory. A victory which leaves no survivors. <clears throat> Be grateful that you escaped with your life. Accursed blood? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Sounds like nonsense to me. Regardless, we have failed, His Majesty. There will be a reckoning. General. I failed no one. You were the one who showed your weakness today. What? You arrogant cur! Don't dirty my name by including me in your blunder. And your reckoning has already arrived. W wait I'll apologize to His Majesty on your behalf by gifting him your head. <sighs> the deed is done. Now, what to do with all these weapons? My prince, I have no doubt your mission will go off without a hitch. And when it does, pray, bring the weapons to the town of Ryu. I'd hate to see such fine equipment go to waste. We will have defanged our enemy and sharpened our talons in turn. An eagle affords himself every advantage. <sighs> Sometimes it feels like I'm just another piece in his games. Master Kazan! Welcome, my prince. And well done on procuring those weapons. Procuring? You made me into a bandit. But I suppose I shouldn't complain, given the results. How have your preparations gone while I was away? <laughs> I know that smile. Before us is a foe mightier than any we faced before. A man of my profession does feel stimulated by such a challenge. Reassuring words. Let's have a toast, eh? Tonight, we drink. We've won nothing yet. You shouldn't drink before the victors have been decided. If you insist, my prince. Well then, I believe you wanted to find our old friend Raimu. Indeed. The late Lord Jigo entrusted Clan May with stewardship over an outpost on the eastern continent. Their castle lies in the snow-swept northern reaches of the region. Stormhead, it's called. Then I leave at once. Safe travels, my prince. When next we meet, it will be upon the battlefield.
treacherous coup worms. I should have known that peace was nothing but false promises. <laughs> Don't be a fool. Treaties exist to be broken. It's simply a matter of how. Therein lies the art. They made a pitiful effort at resisting your majesty, but now they've been subdued. Sa shall serve us well as a base of operations. Its survivors will bolster our numbers. Kill them all. But, Your Majesty, there were thousands. Children as well. The grudges they bear will become the seeds of their strength. Best to pluck them from the earth while we can. I won't give the command again, Ageha. Of course, Your Majesty. Ritsu Mishuyo reporting. I've just returned from my duty. And what of General Ro? He was your leader, if I recall. He was, but he betrayed us, Your Majesty. He worked in league with Prince Hikari. In secret, he told the Prince about the shipment, allowing him to steal the weapons. I was forced to flee, but not before taking the traitor's head. Is that so? You bested the wild bull. I... I would risk my very life if it meant one fewer traitor to your noble cause. Hmm. Well done, Ritsu Mishuyo. Still, the news that Hikari yet lives is troubling. He aims to take your throne, and is gathering strength even now. Try as he might. He is a weakling at heart. Leave me. Your Majesty, do you believe that rubbish he fed you? <laughs> His words are worth less than nothing. Still, his boldness is impressive that he would not scruple to use an ally's death for his own gain. I believe I can make use of this, Ritsu Mishuyo. <laughs> Change is upon us at last. Soon, the fires of war shall engulf the world. Listen to it all day. That's a lute, an instrument well loved in Ku. That song was beautiful. It's been too long since I've heard the melodies of a lute in the air. Far and wide, people speak of me in awe. Today, tomorrow, and the day after that. 
They call me Yomi of a Thousand Tones. Wow, what a name! I've traveled to every corner of this world, taking in my fill of its music along the way. I have a song for every occasion, every place, every person. <sighs> You've piqued my interest. Let's have one then. Gladly. Provided you have the coin. My thousand tones were mastered at great effort, after all. I you have money, right, Hikari? Hmm. Is this enough, Lady Yomi? Of course. This shall buy you a song. One that will fit you as well as your finest kimono. However... Hmm? I require time to make ready. Return to me tomorrow eve, and you shall have what you paid for. Ah, behind every great show is hours of preparation. Just so. Now gird your hearts, for tomorrow they shall be moved as they never have been before. Welcome, welcome! My audience of two has arrived! Now, listen well, and be carried away by my thousand tones. Hmm? Something seems... different about her, doesn't it? Yes, it appears she's already spent our payment on those fine clothes. Alas, I must apologize, for I cannot carry you away just yet. I've come into a spot of trouble, you see. You have? Look here. The string of my loot has frayed. Without replacements, I fear... That our song will have to wait? Indeed. It is tantamount to asking a soldier to charge into battle with a broken sword. Oh, we wouldn't want that happening. If I recall, loot strings are made from the hair of a horse's tail, yes? Indeed, there is but one man nearby with the means to help, but he is not one to offer his aid lightly. He'll have no truck with a wanderer such as I. He scarcely acknowledges my existence. Reminds me of Papa. Then maybe you can help him see reason. Can I count on you? You don't need to ask. I'll see what I can do. Will this work, Yomi? Oh, I believe it will! This is finer than I could have imagined! I see you too can move the hearts of others. <laughs> you might be right about that. With this, I can craft a string worthy of my skill. However, I fear the moment is not ripe for such a performance. Pray come again tomorrow, and I promise that my melody shall lift you to the heavens. Somehow I'm not surprised. The wait will make the music sound all the sweeter. Be patient, Hikari. If you insist. You're generous with the benefit of the doubt, I see. There! There she is! Oh, welcome, my honored patrons! We were looking for you. Do you ever stay in the same spot? My sincerest apologies for the trouble. 
However, I had no choice but to go where I could best drink in the beauty of tonight's moon. You're right. It's enchanting. I wanted its dulcet rays to alight upon my lute as I played your song. Tonight, I perform upon a stage like no other, with string and garb equal to the occasion. All thanks to you, my most honored audience of two. I hope this is worth the trouble. It will be, I assure you. Now, listen. I've never... I've never heard such a song before. I was moved, but somehow... I feel so... so sad. <sighs> By the light of the heart, a favorite of mine. The clothes, the strings, the moon... And they must be just so. It is the only way to perform this song correctly. Nyomi, why did you choose this song to play for us? I have heard it before. I had a friend who would often play the lute for me. She always struck warm tones to match the warmth in her heart. Her name was Tsuki. Was? But you played the song much differently than she did. You painted it with melancholy. Well then, our business is concluded. I shall take my leave. So this is Winter Bloom. According to my treatment log, I've been here before. I have no memory of that visit, of course, and yet... I am at ease here. This ruckus. She's back. Miss Casty is back. Casty? No kidding. 
Welcome back, dear. We were all hoping to see your face around here again. Excuse me, but you recognize me? Huh? What are you saying? How could I forget you after all you did for us? Oh, forgive me, but I have lost my memories. I came here in hopes of finding something that would jog my memory. Well, we'd all be happy to talk your ear off if it helps. Thank you, everyone. Just say the word, Miss Casty. I'd be happy to chat for hours. Though, come to think of it, a Lady Rosa was the one closest to you. Rosa? She's ruler of these lands. You'll find her in her manor in the northwest of town. Thank you for all your help. I'll go see her at once. It isn't Casty. This person seems to recognize me as well. I apologize for the sudden intrusion, but I would like to request an audience with Lady Rosa. Word of your coming has already reached us. This way, please. Good to see... <laughs> Please be at ease, Lady Rosa. Just Rosa will do. No need for formality between old friends. <sighs> so it's true. You really don't remember. There's time for that later. You need medicine, I'll... No need. I already have some. This is the medicine you prepared for me. It is? Dozens of apothecaries saw me before you came. They all declared me incurable. A lost cause. You were different. I owe my life to your fortitude and skill. Oh, I'm glad to hear I was able to help you. Would you allow me to examine you? The medicine appears to be slowing the disease's progress but your entire body is showing signs of mild paralysis. At this rate, you won't last another month. I'm aware. Only a few grains of sand remain in my hourglass. Yet, I wish to live just a little longer. Rosa. Mother, I've brought your medicine. Casty? It's me, Malia! It's been so long! I've gathered balm leaves from the herb garden every day, just like you told me. Garden? What? Garden. The one you planted for us, for Mother. A garden? 
With the right herbs, I may be able to craft a special elixir for Rosa. Would you show me to this garden of yours? It would be my pleasure. The garden is next to the house. I'll go ahead and unlock it. Rest easy, Rosa. I'll be back soon. Casti, how is Lady Rosa? I won't mince words. She doesn't have long. Nevertheless, she's fighting with all her strength to hold on. <sighs> Lady Rosa suffers for the sake of her family and her legacy. Malia is still a mere child of eleven years. In the laws of our land, she cannot inherit her mother's estate until she is twelve. If the lady perishes before her daughter comes of age, her lands and her title will pass to her next nearest kin. So Rosa wants to pass on her estate to Malia. That's why she's so desperate. I'll do everything I can for her. I promise you. I'll see that Rosa's hopes do not crumble around her. These plants are well tended. I've taken care of them every day, Casty, just like you taught me. <laughs> You're such a good daughter, Malia. <laughs> Thanks. May I take some cuttings? I need them to mix an elixir for your mother. Help yourself. Rosa is growing weaker by the moment. Before long, she'll be completely paralyzed. But I know just the thing for her. Scale bark leaf, snow grass. Can't forget the bloodberry. You can never have enough bloodberries. I should ask Malia where they are. There, that should do it. Thank you, Malia. Hey, Casty? Is Mother... Is she gonna die? <sighs> I won't lie to you, Malia. I'm sorry. No. It's all right. Thanks for being honest. I've been with her all this time and watched her getting weaker. I expected this. Even after she became bedridden, she still put our town above all else. I... I want to follow in her footsteps. I want her to know her spirit will live on in me. <laughs> Why do I have to wait until I'm 12? Oh, rats. I shouldn't have wasted your time while Mother still needs you. It's all right, Malia. And I promise you... I'll do everything in my power to see your wish comes true. Come on. Your mother is waiting. Greg, what are you doing here? Is that any way to treat a guest? I'm here to see how our dear sickly Rosa's doing. <coughs> Bad cough, huh? You don't look so good. Worse than the last time I came by. Why not just die already? 
Don't worry. I'll look after your lands and... Huh? Who in the hells are you? It's Casty. Don't you recognize her? Casty? Oh, yes. That healer, one of those heirs apothecaries. You've wasted your time here. Rosa's going to bite it, and there's nothing you can... Enough! I will not permit you to insult our guest, Greg. Hey, no need to get all snippy. All I'm saying is... If you have something to say, you'll address it to me. I am the lady of this house. Ugh, fine. I've had my fill of this place for today anyway. Speaking of which, I'm a guest in your house too. You can at least see me to the door. Very well, if you'll follow me. Lady Malia, are you sure? Of course, I shall handle this. Damn, why'd that healer have to show up now? I am sorry you had to see that. Greg is my nephew. He's not a bad man. He simply wants to change this town for the better. Yet, he is too hasty. He plans to force his vision upon the people, and in his hurry to help, ignores their needs. So that's why you're so desperate to have Malia inherit your title. Forgive me, but I think I need to rest now. <coughs> Rosa, I've made an elixir for you. It should ease your pain. Here, drink deep. Thank you, Casty. I'm already feeling better. I recommend you get some rest. Sleep will aid the medicine in its work. <laughs> You haven't changed one whit, Casty. What was it that you always said? Ah, yes. I only wish to extend a helping hand to all in need. Uh. Even without your memories, you are still the same old Casty. Rosa. <sighs> Casty, if I may have a word. I found this out front. A letter? Apothecary, we have Malia. If you ever want to see her again, come to the tavern in the thieves' quarter. Alone. Malia. I've searched the whole manor and there's no sign of her anywhere. Oh dear. Oh dear, what will I tell Lady Rosa? Where is the tavern they spoke of in the letter? On the north side of town, but the thieves' quarter is too dangerous. People get robbed there. You can't mean to... I do. I intend to rescue her. But... Stay with Rosa and don't worry about me. 
I can take care of myself. Casty. Malia! Now, now. Not another step. What have you done to Malia? Oh, don't worry about her. I'm a pacifist at heart. I gave her a little something to put her to sleep. What do you hope to gain by this treachery? Oh, that's easy. I want you to stop ministering to Rosa and get out of my town. You want that title that badly? I'm a visionary. I'm going to turn this backwater burg into a thriving metropolis, like Clockbank. But that fool Rosa is too stuck in the past to see the future. Eventually, I started thinking. I could do a better job than her. I could change this town. You would pressure her now? When she's battling a mortal illness? It's for her own good. She should give the town to me and retire so she can focus on recuperating. I've almost got her convinced, but you're going to ruin all my hard work. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. Leave, and I promise I'll send Malia home. Ugh. Blah, blah, blah. Could you shut up already? Let's get to the point. You want this busybody gone, right? There's an easier way to make her disappear. Hold on. What are you planning? Depends on what she values more. Her money or her life. Stop! I hired you to stand there and look menacing. Nothing more. If you walk out that door right now, I'll pretend like none of this ever happened. Mick! Mac! Yeah, yeah, boss? Little Miss Tough Girl here is on her way out of town. Show her the boot, and take her purse for the trouble. <laughs> this... This wasn't supposed to happen. It's not my place to judge you for your crimes. Examine your deeds and your heart, and if you find them wanting, become a better person. Tell Rosa what happened here. <laughs> Malia, are you all right? I am now. Thanks, Casty. Let's go home, shall we? Your mother must be worried. I cannot thank you enough for everything you have done for us, Casty. I need no thanks. I merely did what was right. Here, your medicine. You'll stay in bed and rest now, understood?
mother. Lily. Yes, my lady. I thank you for your loyalty to House Glenville. Lady Rosa, don't leave us. Greg. I yes? I leave our town in your hands. Yours and Malia's both. Listen to our people. Care for them. And make our home a better place. I will. I promise. So you promise me we'll see it together. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Cas... T... Rosa... It looks like Rosa has something she wants to talk about. I should inquire and give her a chance. Casty? Do you think I'll last... until my daughter's birthday? Be strong, Rosa. You want to live to see Malia follow in your footsteps, right? Mm. I do. But that is only what I want for her as head of my household. Hmm? What I really want for my child is for her to be happy. <laughs> When I admit it aloud like that, I find that I no longer care a fiddle about the succession. I just want to live long enough to celebrate her birthday one last time. Nothing more. Rosa. Thank you. It's thanks to your skill that I still draw breath. No, Rosa. It's not my skill that sustained you, but your own strength. Malia. I have a present for you. I give this to you, the brooch of joy. You're giving me your brooch? Happy birthday, my angel. Thank you, mother. I'll cherish it always. I promise you, I'll grow up to be a kind and just ruler. Just like you. So don't worry about me, Mother. Oh, Maria. When did you get so big? I'm proud of you, Mo. to go so soon? I... 
I wanted to thank you for everything you did for my mother. I promise you, I'll continue to tend the garden. Those herbs will be used to heal all who need them. <laughs> I know you'll be a kind and just leader, Malia. Oh, I almost forgot to ask. How is Mr. Trousseau? Trousseau? He was such a nice man. It'd be lovely to see him again. Oh, don't tell me you forgot all about him, too. <sighs> I've never heard that name before. I wonder who he could be. Hey, Mr. Trousseau? Yorna, she... She died. That makes me really, really sad. My little sister had a good life. If mommy died too, I... I... There, there, Malia. I'm sure your mother will be better in no time. She has me caring for her, after all. <laughs> You're right. I have to save her. I have to save her. I won't let Malia cry. I can't. I promised Yorna. But Rosa's illness is incurable, and I've only just begun studying the healing arts. Damn it. Damn it. I'm worthless. Worthless! Who are you people? Heirs Apothecaries. We heard someone named Rosa was in need of healing. And it is our purpose to extend a helping hand to all those in need. <sighs> I remember now. To extend a helping hand to all those in need. That was our creed. The driving purpose of Heirs Apothecaries. It was in this town I met that young man named Trousseau, but... Just who was he? It's no use. My memory is a blank. It was something important. I remember that much. But what? <sighs> I won't remember anything sitting here. I need to continue my journey if I'm to have any hope of recovering what was lost to me. Sigh and winter bloom. Names discovered in my log, and gleaming waystones to guide me on my journey. Visiting those towns jogged loose forgotten memories. Memories of my life before, 
of when I was one of Air's apothecaries. And of that rain. Malaya? What are you doing here? It's been a slow process, but I've remembered some of what I'd forgotten. We knew each other once, didn't we? Yes, we did. Like you, I was part of Air's Apothecaries. Why did you lie to me? Why did you pretend not to recognize me? <laughs> Tell me, Malaya. I can't answer that, Casti. The village of Helix. Ring a bell? Helix? This memory. I'll be waiting for you there. Malaya. Helix. Is that where I'll find Air's apothecaries? What happened there? <sighs> I can't remember. I need to see for myself. It's the only way to remember everything. Song of Hope. And I told Gil I'd find words for the song he composed, but... Inspiration hasn't struck me just yet. But I'm sure I'll find the words eventually. I just have to keep going until I do. Now then, this town looks like a fine place to stop on my journey. Oh, Goddess, lend me your strength! Huh? Well, I'll be. Not even Tansy can budget. This is all your fault for wanting to take a shortcut, Tansy! We wouldn't be in a rush if you hadn't overslept, Rico. We were already pressed for time because the ship was late, and now this thing won't budge! Say, Coda! If pushing doesn't work, why don't we pull? Let's give it a try! Wait! <sighs> Just what do you think you're doing? Sorry! <laughs> Improvisation! I love it! That's the true spirit of comedy. How can you be so calm, boss? Everyone will laugh at us if we perform without our wagon and props. Then I'll consider it a success. Not even gold shines brighter than a smile. Come on, there's gotta be something we can do. Oh, think, think. Oh, goddess, dear goddess. Pardon me, but I know a way to get your wagon moving again. R really? Are you from around here? No, I'm just a traveler. Would you happen to have a sturdy stick lying around? Hmm. Rico, Coda, could you help this woman find what she needs?
Will this do? You can't be serious. That's Coda's flute. I see. Just wait right here then. I'll go find one. Now, if we just put this stick right here, and... Up you go! We, we did, did it! it! Oh my goddess! I don't know who you are, kid, but we owe you one. <laughs> Don't mention it. I learned a lot playing in the mud growing up. <laughs> You're stronger than you look. What's your name? Agnia. Agnia Bristarni. Bristarni? Well, in any case, we owe you a debt of gratitude, Agnia. We're a roaming band of entertainers. We call ourselves Giselle's Traveling Troop. Whoa! That dove appeared out of thin air! <laughs> I'm glad you like it. In my eyes, not even the shine of gold compares to that of a smile. That's why the girls and I travel the world, hoping to make it shine. Bringing smiles to every corner of the realm. That's our motto. How wonderful! I'm a dancer. I'm on a journey to become a star. That's fantastic! Right, Rico? Coda? You're a woman with dreams, Agnia. A star is someone who illuminates people's lives. She makes them smile in the best and worst of times. She's there, come rain or shine. It's a feat that only those who keep getting up on stage can achieve. Yes, ma'am. Boss, it's almost time for rehearsal. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? I hope we meet again someday, my dear dreamer. We'll be putting on a show later. If you have time, why don't you come see it? I promise it'll make you smile. I can't even imagine what sort of show brings smiles to every corner of the realm. I could learn a thing or two from them. I better hurry. Wouldn't want to miss it. Huh. Hmm. <sighs> what do we do now? <sighs> this is my fault. I should have been keeping an eye out. I guess we should start looking. Oh, Agnia. Is something wrong? What happened to your show? We have a runaway. A runaway? You mean, your dove? Don't worry, I'll help you find it. No, it's not the dove. It's boss. But what? What do you mean? Sometimes her nerves get to her before a show. But we have to bring her back. We can't perform without our leading lady. <sighs> oh, goddess. Let me help. I don't quite understand why she's run away, but... We have to find her. For the audience's sake. Thank you.
Thank you, Agnia. Thank you. <sighs> Giselle, there you are. Well, if it isn't the dreamer. Your troop said you ran away. Did something happen? It all disappeared. Every line I was supposed to say just vanished. My mind went completely blank during rehearsal. Imagine if that happened in a real performance. It's happened before, and every time, I just ran away. I'm not meant for this stage anymore. My life as a performer is over. Giselle... But what about your audience? They've been looking forward to your show. I envy the sea. It has no worries, it feels no pain. It must be nice, not being swayed by anyone. Sometimes I wish I could just sink to the bottom of the ocean and rest there peacefully, like a seashell. <clears throat> Giselle, you said you wanted to be a seashell, right? Hmm. But you can't. You can't just go giving up like that. Giving up? always easy. Everybody knows that. But making people smile? That's why you and I live and breathe. <sighs> Agnea. Oh! What happened to your feet? They've got calluses all over. Don't tell me. You got all those from dancing? I can't imagine how much that hurt, and at your tender age. These are nothing. They were worth it to bring smiles to people's faces. <sighs> so chin up, Giselle. Even if you forget your lines, you just learn them again. Believe in yourself. You can do anything you set your mind to. star is someone who illuminates people's lives, right? So even if you stumble, you just have to get back on your feet. Hmm. Just get back on your feet, huh? Yay. It's high time you came out of your shell, Giselle. Besides, you're not a seashell. You're a shiny pearl. And I think the world could use your radiance. Agnia. You're right. I have to get back on my feet. That's the spirit. Now let's go. While journeying across the land with our trusty wagon, we arrived here, on Tropu Hopu. We've come to shine upon the flowers in your hearts, that they may bloom into smiles. We are Giselle's traveling troop, bringing smiles to every corner of the realm. I can't thank you enough, Agnia. You helped us get our wagon out of the mud, and even helped Boss find her courage again. <sighs> I'm sorry. I got worked up, so... I might have gotten a little carried away. You don't need to apologize. We're grateful to you. 
She puts on quite the show, doesn't she? She sure does. Boss's bad habit of running away had our troop constantly on the move. But when she stands upon that stage, she shines brighter than anyone. What sort of spell did you cast on her, Agnia? I've never seen her this radiant before. Praise be the goddess for this day. Thank you, thank you. It warms my heart to see you all smile like this. Now then, there's someone I'd like to introduce to you all. I owe a great deal to her for setting me on the right path. Please welcome Agnia, the traveling dancer. M me? That's your cue. Show us a dance, will you? <laughs> if you insist. Watch me shine. I want to thank everyone for our successful show tonight, and Agnia for touching my heart. Your heart? I can say without a doubt that you'll bring happiness to people the world over. D do you really think so? I agree. You're going to be a star someday. Speaking of stars... Reminds me of Dolcinea! <sighs> <laughs> I think Agnia here can outshine even that superstar. You've got a real talent for making people smile. I... I don't know what to say. But we won't go down without a fight. We're going to keep practicing. Two, for the Grand Gala! The Grand Gala? It's the greatest festival on the Eastern Continent! Entertainers and dancers from all across the realm gather there! Standing upon that stage is the greatest honor there is for performers like us! Wow, that sounds like a dream come true! Well, my mind's made up. I'm going to that gala. You too, Agnia? I just have a feeling... that I need to be there if I'm going to be a star. Which is why I have to go. I remember now why your name sounds so familiar. You've got the same last name as Kwani Bristarni, the star from the West. You knew my mother? I see. So you're her daughter. I heard about her when I went to the town of Sai in the West for a show. They said she danced there about 20 years ago. She was well-loved by everyone, just like you. I had no idea. I think I'd like to see this town for myself. I might be able to learn something about my mother there. There's still time before the gala this year. It might not be a bad idea to pay that place a visit. I believe I will. Thank you, Giselle. Agnia, 
You gave me more courage than I've ever had before. But I haven't been able to give anything to you in return. Giselle... That's not true. You've all given me so much. That's so? Then... I'm happy. Good luck on your journey, Agnia. No matter what happens, keep smiling. If you do, happiness is sure to find you. Those are beautiful words. Would you mind if I use them in a song? <laughs> It'd be my honor. Boss, we're ready to go! Looks like this is goodbye for now, Agnia. May the goddess be with you. See you! Safe travels, everyone. I'll see you at the Grand Gala. I look forward to it already. Just please don't run away this time, boss. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. And even if I stumble, I just have to get back on my feet. Right, Agnia? <laughs> right. <laughs>